empty-handed. So this is how today's five games uh, unfolded in the Premier League. Arsenal made it back-to-back -back wins after Alexandra Lacazette's winner at Brighton. Ben Mee scoring the winner for Burnley, leaving rock bottom Sheffield United still winless after 16 games. No goals at St Mary's between Southampton and West Ham. Leeds put five past West Bromwich Albion at the Hawthorns, four of which came in the first half alone. We saw United beat Wolves late in injury time, and then still to come, of course, on Wednesday, Newcastle face the champions Liverpool, while Fulham host Tottenham. It's a confirmation as to what that result then means for Manchester United. The perfect way, really, to end 2020, unbeaten in nine in the Premier League, and up to within two points of the league leaders Liverpool, who, of course, have still got to play tomorrow. As far as Wolves are concerned, well, they were unable to make inroads towards the top half. Uh, they drop a place to 12th, 21 points to their name from 16 games played. And so after 92 and a half minutes at Old Trafford, it looked like Wolves and Manchester United were destined to finish and play out a goalless draw. That was until Marcus Rashford pounced in injury time. Thank you, well done. Thank you. It's turned out to be quite a special 2020 for Marcus Rashford, off the pitch and on it as well, Michael. Yeah, I mean, off the pitch, he's been sensational. We've mentioned it lots of times. Um, you know, he's, he's really been a shining light for the game, not just for, for himself or, or Manchester United. So, full credit to him. On the pitch, he's getting better and better. Um, scoring plenty of goals now. I still think he's a, he's a wide player that, that's better sort of chipping in with goals and contributing to a performance as opposed to being the main centre forward. Um, but no, he's grown into a super player, super human being as well. And how much credit does he deserve? The fact that those around him were tiring, and yeah. we'll talk about the Wolves defender as well in a second, mm -hmm. but he carried on going yeah. he? right to the last whistle. Look, he's, he's, he's such a generous boy when it comes to his work rate and his willingness to run and to keep going. He's very, very, he's so honest like that. Um, and, and as soon as the ball was lost, as soon as United won possession, he came alive. He saw something that, 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 that others perhaps weren't quick enough to react to. And, uh, and from when he, where he picked the ball up, there was nothing really that dangerous. Then all of a sudden, it's in the back of the net. He talked about Art Nori, uh, almost on his haunches, um, the wing back. But boy, did he make him pay for it, Michael. He did, yeah. He mentioned uh, the cramp to the fullback um, in that interview there. We're thinking here, Andy, that, yeah. that Hoover needs to just chip it long and, and get Traore chasing it down. But playing this ball basically surrenders possession. And you just look at the top of your screen. Ain't Nori, the, the left back, sat there nursing cramp. Now, it's not for me that. It's not for me. I, you know, eventually when there's danger, he stands up and he, and he chases back. So if you're okay to do that then, then you're okay to do that now. And we're seeing this too much in football, actually. Um, and it's because of that, the contributing factor, Andy, I feel, yeah. towards the goal. Absolutely right. It's because there was a gap there. Rashford runs into it. United just chipped the ball over the top. And he's allowed to chop back inside on his left foot. So again, from this angle, you can see now, when Rashford picks this ball up, don't let him come back inside. Keep him there, make him go to the byline and cross it. They make it, they allow him to come back inside and look, it's a horrible deflection off size, but, but once he's allowed to come back inside, Michael, he knows he might be in business. He does, yeah. I mean, I go back to the source, Andy, if I'm honest. I just can't have my full back. If, if I've got a defender and I'm a manager and he's lying on the floor, and we saw it with Christensen, yeah. against Aston Villa. You know, he has a little tackle. If he stands, if he gets back and gets back into position, yeah. all this lying around, faking injury or whatever, because you've just seen he's stood up and he's ran back, and he's got history, Andy, as well. I'm Has sure he? he did it. Yeah, he did it against uh, Southampton a while ago. Yeah. And, I mean, it's... Well, here we, ha yeah, here we have it. Look at this. I mean, absolutely nothing wrong. Rolling on the floor, stays down, and where does the goal end up? Or... Uh, the problem area is in the left back area. Look, the ball comes out. There's no left back now, so the ball gets chipped where he would have been, yeah. and all of a sudden, if he had been there, there wouldn't have been any goal. Bang! Important goal, one nil to, mm -hmm. to Southampton. It's it's unacceptable, honestly. If I was a manager, I would. Well, I, I, that's why I couldn't be a manager. It, I could accept it if it was my centre forward. Yeah. You know that 
not my centre half, not my left back. They, they have in the last minute. Come on, we're going to get a point at Old Trafford. All right, just to play devil's advocate, he did go off a couple of times with a couple of niggly he did, injuries. He, had, he, he fell on the point of his shoulder. He, did. he was in a bit of pain. So but... was he maybe struggling to finish until the whistle? I suppose by the He's way, by the way he came back. Manish. Yeah, yeah, you're right. By the way he came back. And in some ways, do you think he overcompensated going goal side of yeah. Marcus? Again, he sort of runs back. You'll see him. He drifts back. And so he gets himself off the floor. I mean, Mo's absolutely right. Get back up on your feet now. He sees Rashford move and he thinks, oh, I better get on my feet. I better get going. So he now runs back. Keep him closer to the byline. But he wants him, he wants effectively now to pass him on to somebody else. Yeah. And... I know he's shattered, the boy is absolutely out on his feet, but he gets up, he's limping a bit. Now he decides, oh, I better get going. Now keep him going towards the byline. Don't let him come back on his left foot. Look, at, oh, look at the bottom of the screen, 90 minutes plus three. Yeah. I mean, Andy, I've I know. played with players that have had a broken leg and tried to and still <laughs> run back. Honestly, I have. <laughs> I know I have. And it's, it is, it, it's funny in here. But it, imagine being the manager. Uh, you've got a point at Old he's Trafford. Got, do you know, he's two wing-backs tonight, and they're both talented boys. He's got Hoover there, last, last 30 seconds on the clock. Chip it in behind. We've got Adama Traore who'll go after that. Yeah. Just clip it in behind him. And then on the other side, he's got the other young man on the floor, feels shattered, doesn't feel like it can go on, then all of a sudden gets back up on his feet, and it's all too late. It's all too late. But, you know, as a striker, you've got to be merciless. And you've got to make them pay for that. Definitely. And we heard what Marcus Rashford said. He, he smelt blood, didn't yeah, he? Did, he yeah. said it. He, he, he felt that the fullback was getting cramp. So I thought, next time I get out, I'm going to run at him. And that's exactly what you do. You prey on the weak. Yeah. That's what centre forwards do. That's yeah. what you've got to do. So, absolutely brilliant for Marcus Rashford. And from Manchester United's point of view, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a real game changer. But as I say, if I, was from a, from a, if I was a Wolves manager, I'd be absolutely livid. Up until that point, it was a contest that I think admittedly he wouldn't have lived long in the memory. No. But they're now second in the table, United, behind their arch rivals, Liverpool. Mm. What does that mean to them going into 2021? Well, I think the, 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 that it says that this league is very unpredictable and that with their squad and the quality that they've got, mm. the run that they're on, United are a confidence team. They're a confidence team. And when they get confident, they didn't play great tonight, but they'll feel great about this victory tomorrow morning. They'll feel great about it when they see themselves second um, and they're on a good run. They're in a good moment. Um, and you wouldn't want to play them. You wouldn't want to catch them when they're, when they're, when they're right, Michael, would you? you no, wouldn't. no, and you said something earlier in the show about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer being a confidence manager yeah. as well. And that resonated with me, because I think it's exactly right. How many times under his reign have you seen Manchester United doing well? All of a sudden, a couple of bad results, yeah. what do they do? Boom. They yeah. revert back to type, and they, they sit back and they counter-attack. And that's what they've done. That's what they did a couple of seasons ago and last season as well against Manchester City. Look at the record against Man City. They beat them most times yeah. Yeah. Um, because they play in a certain way. Now, I think to be a, a, a title winner, you've got to have much more rounded. You've got to, you've got to have all the, the different weapons in your arsenal. And at the minute, I just don't think Manchester United are good enough with the ball mm. and taking the game. To, we saw again tonight, it's not really, they should be having all the possession, loads of chances. They didn't create anything, really. No. No. And, and I think that when Man United are hot and when the manager's confident and when they're going at teams, they can actually, I mean, the last game against Leeds, they were, they were absolutely brilliant. Yes, Leeds played into their hands, but they can do it. They've got the players to do it. I just think in certain situations, they need to be better and a bit braver. Yeah. OK, well, let's hear from the manager who had a big smile on his face at the full-time whistle. Here is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer.